valid if you if you're doing some kind of sort of research focusing in on, for example, the vulnerable child or, or, or anything like that. How do you know whether your research is valid? Um, but I, I'd also want to make sure that any research that is going on into second language acquisition that yeah. we looked at last week, we need to know about it. Of but it's a, it's a, if there are there are opportunities there, and there are straight, there is research happening, but if the teacher at the chalk face don't get to find out about it, it it's not worth the paper. It's, it's not, not no no. And I think my point over here as well was that um, there's a lot of high level academic research, if you like, some mm. PhD masters, that essentially is never synthesized and doesn't meet the teacher you know it doesn't meet the teachers where they are um, and so even if it is really effective and, and the the findings and the effect sizes are huge if it doesn't filter its way down to classrooms then um, then that that's a real shame I think more than anything equally if a teacher doesn't know where to start with research I think there you know we went to this research event last week at the University of York where there is a collaboration between researchers who actually desperately want to speak to teachers mm -hmm. and my suggestion last week was that rather than having the academics speaking at the next conference why don't they actually get the teachers out and why don't we talk about what our issues are and what we need you know what kind of research do we need I actually suggested that we're going to set up a dialogue with uh, some of these researchers rather than they, they mm -hmm. focused in an, uh, um, I'd never even heard of an unergative intransitive I'd never heard of an unergative intransitive and there'd be, there'd be some you. very very uh, very very precise research onto different types of, of uh, of, of intransitive verb that none of us linguists have ever heard of, and that well, actually it would be really useful to, if somebody could research why pupils find it so difficult to to master the perfect tense, um, yeah. and and we're actually going to try and set that dialogue going. We can suggest what they research, and we can have do it within the classroom. So those sorts, as long as those sorts of consortia are, are, are really useful because they're funded. I think this one's funded mm. by the British Academy. Um, there's quite a, a good sum of money behind it. Again, it, it relies on people turning up on a Saturday mm. in their own time. But when you feel passionate about your subjects, and I think languages do get a bashing on an almost daily basis, um, you know, I'm not having that because I feel passionate about languages. And I think we can sit there and we can moan, we can grow and we can say that children aren't motivated by languages. Or we can go away and do some active classroom research and we can collaborate with people in universities and we can actually make a huge difference to the future of language learning in this country, aren't they? Um, just a bit, a bit more on um, what's already out there, I guess. Um, I've just been to hear, I'm going to get his name on, Jonathan, um, from the Institute of Effective Education. And um, most of you will be aware, because I think there's one of your dele delegate bags, of the Better Evidence publication. And, and obviously the Institute of Effective Education is based out of York University. What I find fascinating as a linguist is that the only subject that isn't covered by the Institute of, Assist, of, of Effective Education, Better Evidence, is modern languages. And yet I know for a fact, because I work with people and I, you know, I network wherever I go, that there is a huge wealth of modern languages research out there. So why, when the <coughs> Institute of Effective Education is doing a great job at actually making research that's out there digestible and um, a appealing to type these time poor teachers that we're talking about, why, when there's so much research out there that is actually effective and useful, is that one publication where it's not, you know, it's it's not being um, looked into? So I, I would quite quite like to speak to Jonathan about that and see if there's anything we can do. Um, one other thing, um, the top one, the quite revolution. CFBT we took over from the National Centre for Languages in 2012. Um, they produced a document called the Quiet Revolution. I don't know how many of but if you click on the hyperlink, it will actually take you there if you want to have a look at this later. It was so quiet, this quiet revolution, that I don't know anybody who actually knows about it. So it's coming back to, I think, what Terry said is, if there is this research going on, what are the channels of making this available and accessible and, and known about to teachers? Um, and then the... the um, This is something I wanted to come to because Colin Christie is very well known in the world of languages. He works out of Cumbria University but is based in, in London. And Colin for years and years has been fascinated by spontaneous pupil talk and how do we get students producing language without just regurgitating spoon and spoon feeding. And what I think Colin has done, which I think I would love to see more of, is he's done, he spent years and years um, finishing his PhD about spontaneous talk, but he's had the foresight to write a, a teacher focused pamphlet if you like, I think it's about 20 pages summarising his PhD. So he's done what I think we would love to see more of as teachers 
in the 20 page summary of his PhD is going to be far more digestible and meaningful to the average time poor um, but interested um, teacher than something where um, perhaps it's, um, you know, I wouldn't sit down and read somebody's full PhD, for example. So, what was his name? His name was, let me just come back. Colin Christie, it's C O L I N, so Colin, and then the surname is Christie, C H R I S T I E. Um, it's on the trainings reading list at the university, it's one that I highly recommend, and mainly because target language has always been an issue um, with Ofsted since the beginning of time of Ofsted. The last one, just to click here um, before I summarise, is um, a gentleman that I know of who used to work at Nottingham um, Boys School. Um, so an independent school in Nottingham and he is someone that I've known for a long time on Twitter um, he's called Jose Picardo and he is Spanish um, and he's created this document which is called Technology in One Foreign Language as a Practitioner's Perspective and this is just very, again, very small scale um, classroom based research from a range of people, myself included where we were teaching one language in the classroom we were trying out Web2 technology um, Skype, all sorts of different um, things, and he's put that together in a, in a teacher-friendly, um, readable digest, um, which again, I don't know that many people know about. So I think, just to summarise, and then kind of what next, I was trying to think of a clever acronym, and that was as close as I could get to KISS, because I couldn't think of anything with a K. Um, so for me, um, if, I give the, if I give the analogy of Embrace, does anybody know the band Embrace, please think yeah. I love the band Embrace, like, I, I live for their music, they've just brought a new album out, I'm very excited, I've been stalking them for the last few days. Um, if I were to choose to write up some research, I would probably choose to write about Embrace because I, I love them with a passion. Um, but that wouldn't really lead to anything effective for most people because not, not many of you have even heard of them, care about them, you know, it, it doesn't really matter. So I think, when, when it... When I was going to try and um, summarise everything that I've said, I suppose my key message is, if you are thinking about um, teacher research, find something that you are genu genuinely passionate about, something that you want to change for the better, and not just in your classroom, but that will actually help lots of other teachers if you were to then publish something. So for me, it's about collaboration, collaboration with your colleagues, not just in your school, but by your teacher, etc. Um, what is, um, you know, what are the key issues? Going away, finding a baseline and investigating that, uh, and maybe involving an academic or someone who knows a bit more than you do about research. Summarising your findings and then finding some way of sharing. Um, I adopted this Bart Simpson picture, I'm sure some of you are aware of the Simpson, and I changed it so that it says research is not a dirty word. Um, when I say normal teachers, I don't mean like that there are normal teachers and bizarre teachers, but you know what I mean, that it, research can be for normal teachers, it's not just for university types. Um, it should be active and classroom based, in my opinion. Um, and I think this whole issue of time, if you don't have time to write it up, collaborate with somebody who does. Um, don't let that be the barrier to, to, to doing it. Um, my details are there again, ccbureau.ac.uk. The, the presentation will be found if you want to share that, um, you know, change it, use it for, for dissemination purposes. And thank you for your um, time and uh, contributions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Susie, I have my hair cut at the same hairdressers where the drummer from Embrace has his hair cut. Don't haircut. say that. He tweeted <laughs> me the other day. They're from Brickhouse, aren't they? Yeah, well, he lives in... Oh, his girlfriend used to live in...